Hello everybody and welcome. This is going to be the update video that everybody has been waiting for, at least I believe. Um, it's been a long awaited uh, time frame from when Cisco made the initial announcements back a while ago that they were talking about updating the version 5 version 4 blueprint of the CCA routing and switching uh, written in lab exams to the actual release of it. So after doing a little bit of uh, digging on the internet, uh, both on Cisco's main website and the Learning Network's website, I found the uh, update for this uh, after talking to several people on Internet Network Experts online forum, the IEOC. I have found the update information. It is official, actually, as of today. So for those of you that are studying for your CCIE, um, not a lot is going to change, but there's still a good portion that will change. So I don't want to scare people into thinking that uh, this is going to be something easy or there's not nothing you really need to worry about. The blueprint itself is changing quite a bit. There's going to be a much newer format. Uh, it's going to be more specific to modern networks today instead of the older blueprint. They are taking a lot of the hardware specific architecture requirements that the iOS images would be limited to. I know that you're like, what? Basically what that means is there's certain f things that certain platforms couldn't support that others could with the same iOS image. So what they're doing is it's going to be a complete virtual setup. There's not going to be a rack of equipment that you connect into or anything like that. So a lot of it has changed. And as you can see, the RNS version 4 blueprint, that is what was. The version 5 blueprint is what is now. Starting in March is when the uh, first uh, it will officially kick off to where you'll be able to even um, take the, exam, uh, the version 5 blueprint exam. Right now, you're still only able to do version 4. So you, we have six months, so June 3rd of 2014 is when everything will kick off and be what it is. So I'm going to go through and explain some of this to you so you guys have an idea of what's going on and how it's actually going to work. Now the way that they have this broken down is that the there's six major core functions or six major areas to discuss. We have networking principles, which for the written exam is going to be 10% of the exam, 0% of the lab. So they're taking out the theory aspects of it and how things work. So they're not going to want you, they're not going to ask you how to, uh, what's the difference between TCP and UDP in the lab. That just wouldn't make any sense. Uh, what they are doing is in the written exam, they are going to be studying uh, more on layer two technologies, which is going to be both for the LAN and for the WAN. Uh, that's going to be 50% for the written and 20% for the lab. For layer three technologies, which is going to be core, this is going to be a big section. This is going to be 40% for the written and 40% for the lab, which I'm actually not surprised that those numbers are equal because layer three routing is the way that networks, you get traffic from one network to another. Uh, VPN technologies is going to take a big chunk of it. And that's 15% of the written, 20% of the lab. And they have infrastructure security, which is going to be 5% um, of the written and 5% of the lab. And then we have infrastructure services, which is uh, equal 15% for both. So as we're going through here, I will, uh, it, does, it does break down what each section will, will be covering. So layer two technologies, dynamic, don't, do, yeah. Don't, uh, layer 2 technologies domain predominantly covers LAN switching and WAN circuit technology. So you're still going to have layer 2 Ethernet. You're still going to have PPP. You're still going to have uh, things like that. Frame relay is gone. Frame relay is out of here. So I believe it covers this inf information more in detail. So layer 3 technologies uh, domain is the principal, uh, principal domain of the curriculum. So you'll have um, uh, interior and exterior routing. However, the thing with this is they're going to be focusing heavily IPv6 and IPv4 for both, for all the routing protocols. So you'll have to know RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS, and BGP, and all in uh, IPv6 and IPv4 implementations. And it says right there, as industry continues to migrate towards the version 6, the new exam revision focuses more heavily on dual stack layer 3 technologies and equally treats version 4 and version 6 in all corresponding uh, routing topics. There's no longer a dedicated section for V6. So dual stack routing 
is actually very, very simple. It's just a matter of you turning IPv6 unicast routing on. And then if you want to turn IPv6 multicast routing on, you type in IP multicast routing. So it's as simple as doing that, but there's a bit more to it because of the way that the way that um, routing works between version four and version six. Um, actually, version six is a little easier to implement, um, but we'll talk about that more when we get into the actual technologies itself. So um, the version, uh, the old multicast technology domain from the version is now included in layer two and layer three. So they're not going to have a dedicated multicast section that's going to be included in layer three and in layer two, uh, which is where they would sit anyway. Um, the VPN technology is a new standalone domain, uh, including tunneling and encryption subdomains. So tunneling subdomains include uh, MPLS L2 and L3 VPNs, as well as dynamic multipoint VPN and IPv6 tunneling techniques. The encryption, now this was the tunneling. This is this is the tunneling section right here. All this, all this was, uh, this was all tunneling. And then below here we have the encryption. Let's see if uh, we have the encryption subdomain includes IPsec with pre-shared keys for both the written and the lab exam, and GET, which is group encryption tunneling or transport for the um, for the written exam only. I have never seen this actually done before, so I really don't can't speak upon it. <coughs> I have dealt with IPsec between branch offices, and the pre-shared key, uh, pre key is simply you typing something in, and uh, it's matching on both ends. When you do your transform set and the pre-shared key, that's all that really makes a difference. And actually, to be honest with you, it's the Ike version one, the the, the phase one, that's actually the the control plane. So that's the router to router forming the uh, the IPsec tunnel, and the uh, phase two is the land to land. So we'll talk more about that when we get into the actual layer two or how VPNs actually work. Um, the MPLS L2 and L3 uh, layer three VPNs, uh, it's just going to be a deeper dive into them. Um, so I don't know exactly what they're going to cover with that. So uh, the infrastructure security uh, domain uh, includes device security and network security, but focusing on features supported. In, on ISR routers and the Cisco 3000 series switches. So that's going to be the 3550s, 3650s, or 3560s, uh, 3750s, which I happen to have a 3750 and a 3550 here. Uh, it excludes any topic that relies on dynamic crypto or a PKI or any remote servers. So with this basic, with PK, PKI stands for public key infrastructure. Um, that basically would be eliminated because you'd have to rely on a, on a remote server or some sort of dynamic way to for keys to be um, kicked off. Uh, infrastructure services such as system management network services, um, QoS, uh, net optimization, layer two QoS, uh, for um, are included in the written exam only. It's only supporting lab exam, lab exam topics to focus on platform independent concepts. Another notable change to the exam topics is in the inclusion of weighting factors for each of the six domains. So that'll give you an idea of the main focuses of the exam is certainly the layer three covering 40% of the curriculum. So as long as you're an expert in layer three, that's gonna be a dedicated thing. You should know everything about layer three routing. No, no, nothing less than that. Um, so the topic changes, um, this is going to give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, topics added to it is going to be describe basic software architecture differences between iOS and iOS XE. Um, the uh, ASRs, the uh, Aggregating Services Router, those guys run XE. So like the ASR 1000s, they run iOS XE. So I don't, I don't have the ability to run XE um, here at home, even in GNS3. The capability is not there. Uh, identify Ceph concepts, uh, general, uh, explain general network and network challenges, um, TCP, IP, UDP, uh, IP, TCP, and UDP operations, describe chassis virtualization and aggregation technologies, um, PIM snooping, things like that, um, WAN rate-based Ethernet circuits. This is probably going to be have some, something to do with your CIR, CIR committed information rate and uh, something to do with Metro Ethernet is my guess. Describe BGP fast convergence features. Um, don't exactly know what they mean by that. 
Uh, IS to IS has been brought back. So it's going to be intermediate system to intermediate system, which is basically router to router. So um, describe basic layer 2 VPN. And this is all for the written exam. Um, wireline and then L2 VPN uh, LAN services. And then they have described get VPN and then IPv6 NAT. Um, topics added to the our, uh, the written and lab. This, so this stuff here is just the written. This is the lab. So use iOS troubleshooting tools, apply troubleshooting methodologies, interpret packet captures, and uh, uh, tr uh, implement and troubleshoot a BFD, bidirectional forwarding detection. EIGRP multi-address named mode. I've never heard of that. But it's got to be something in the upper, in the newer iOS images. Uh, troubleshoot and optimize EIGRP and OSPF conversions and scalability. DMVPN, dynamic multipoint VPN. Um, single hub, which I'm guessing that means you're going to have three devices and only one of them is going to be the hub. Um, IPsec with three shared keys and uh, IPv6 first hop security. So as we come down here a little farther, uh, the written exam removes... Um, IPv6 multicast from the written, RIPNG, IPv6 tunnel techniques, uh, AAA is gone. So, and, uh, so, topics are mo moved to the CCR lab for the written exam. Oh, so, you're still going to have to know what iOS and AAA with TACX and RADIUS, how that works. Dot 1X, layer 2 QoS. Performance routing is now gone. Um, frame relay, say goodbye. This is the actual uh, lab exam right, right here. Um, so uh, layer two stuff like uh, flex links, which is a way for you to not use spanning tree. Uh, ISL, which is there's this um, proprietary, um, what do you call it? <laughs> proprietary trunking encapsulation. Uh, L2TP, um, layer two tunneling for, uh, protocol tunneling. That's gone. Frame relay, link fragmentation and interleaving and frame relay traffic shaping are gone. Now that's not just frame relay. Um, I believe frame relay completely is gone. There's no frame anywhere. Uh, WCCP, which stood for Web Cache Configuration Protocol, that basically allows you to, or well, it's not even on the exam, so um, redirect traffic. It's a, it's a traffic redirector. Uh, iOS firewall and IPS, gone. Uh, RITE and remote monitoring is gone. Uh, router, group management protocol, RGMP, RSVP, QoS, weighted round robin, and sourced round robin. Um, those are all gone. So now we're going to get down to the actual exam format, which I'm sure you guys are all dying to see. So basically what you have here is the new exam number is going from 350 to 001 to 400-101. Very familiar to the CCNA, huh? Um, the new exam written format uh, remains... Um, essentially the same the lab format has a significant change though so now remember back if you didn't know uh, previously what they would do in the troubleshooting uh, in the, the version 4 blueprint is they would give you two hours for troubleshooting on a 30 device topology with 10 tickets the, the topology was so great or so large I should say because of the fact of they wanted to make sure that most of the case the tickets were independent of each other so you wouldn't have to, to solve ticket one in order for to solve ticket two. So now what they're doing is they're giving you an optional 30 minutes to uh, to do troubleshooting. Some people just don't have enough time to do the troubleshooting. So what they did is they gave you um, an additional 30 minutes that's optional. Notice how they're taking it away from configuration. So you can, uh, and I believe the way that they put this is it'll give you at the two hour mark, you have the option of going an additional half hour and then your configuration will be shaved off by one half hour. Um, now they have a uh, diagnostics section here, which is no devices, and you're basically, it's like a written exam inside of the, the lab exam, where you're given outputs, this is what's broke, what do you need to do to fix it? It's basically what there is. There's no, you, it's uh, very, I guess it's simulation based, so, or not simulation based, I'm sorry. Um, it's gonna be scenario based. So you're gonna be given a output and then uh, several things to go along with it to try to figure out what's going on. Is it a duplex mismatch? Is it this? Is it that? Is the DHCP isn't getting somewhere? Well, I mean, wh what's the problem? And then uh, if you do not need the half an hour from the troubleshooting section, you get five and a half hours of configuration. If you need the five or that half hour in troubleshooting, 
you then only get five hours of configuration. So just to be f just to be clear on that. Um, let's see here. Uh, it says right here, just like the CCI route switch is version four, the troubleshooting module delivers incidents that are independent of each other, meaning that the resolution of one does not depend on the resolution of another incident. In case you weren't from up uh, sure was what I meant by that. So basically, what they do here is you get the uh, lab con. Uh, the content updates. It says this is designed in order to objectively quantify the troubleshooting skills and avoid bias of strengths and weaknesses in specific technical areas. Um, as I mentioned, you get 30 minutes to extend, which is taken from the configuration section. Um, now, if you finish troubleshooting early, then that configuration module is credited by the time gain. So if you take an hour and 45 minutes to do troubleshooting and you feel like you're good to go with your T-shoot section, and you hit done, then that time is automatically going to be added to your um, uh, configuration section. Um, the diagnostic section, it is not able to be manipulated. It's 30 minutes, nothing more, nothing less. So, um, for those of you that are looking for the grading, uh, let's see here, read this section right here. So, I'll pause. You guys can pause this part, and you guys can read, and go from there. So, figure I'll just sit here for a minute, and you guys can read that. Maybe it'll help if I unhighlight it. But it's this section right here. So, um, feel free to pause the video, read that, and, we'll, and then uh, we can move on. And then I'll show you where to find this online. So, uh, moving down further, as briefly mentioned above, the diagnostic module is no as is to further assess the skills required to properly diagnose network issues. So you're going to be given um, uh, multiple op multiple outputs and different uh, resources to check. So they're not just going to expect you to do a show run or a debug. That might not be what you need to do. So you may have to jump into console outputs, n uh, look at a network diagram, email threads, uh, syslog, and even traffic caches. So what they will actually do is they will do a packet capture using Wireshark or some sort of... Um, sniffer software for you to see what's going on. So, um, and then we have some uh, diagnostic issues or diagnostic uh, the overview. So, uh, going down here for the continuing on, um, this is actually how the you won't need a terminal session for the actual devices. Um, it is a going to be written exam format where you're going to have multiple choice, single answer, or multiple answer, drag and drop, or even point and click on diagrams. Um, they will be, um, where is it? I'm, I'm actually reading it as I'm going through this. Um, tickets do not require uh, candidates to write in uh, anything in or to provide the answer to a ticket. Um, it is deterministic, so uh, it's closed ended, meaning uh, it's going to give you A, B, or C. It's either going to be A, B, or C, and then, or possibly B and C, or possibly all three, depending on what you what you're seeing, and you're supposed to select the best, so that it could be clear cut. It's going to be. I'm guessing the way that they're going to do it is they're going to give you something to the effect of um, connection between R1 and R2 is not responding. There you ping, but you get it a port unreachable. You know, so you have to go in there and figure out why it's not responding. So they might be denying ICMP. And then you'd have to go in there and physically look at whatever's going on and go from there. So uh, this is the overall cut score. Um, what this basically means is you're given uh, 30, 120 minutes with an optional 30 minutes. Uh, if you need to pull that 30 minutes, it comes off config. Uh, independent incidents, access to virtual devices, this is the first apology. There is... Um, uh, and this is the output right here that you need to pay attention to. Then they have the diagram or diagnostic section. Um, then they have um, no optional uh, time, independent tickets, no access to any devices. So you're basically just looking at some stuff to try to figure out what's going on. And then the configuration is obviously going to be quite large in there. Now, the way that this works is they're taking the minimum score. You have to... You have to score minimum for each section and then I guess the the mean or the average 
of all these is what's actually used to um, uh, figure out if you passed or not. So, but I'm not really sure if that's exactly what they mean, but so coming down here just a little farther and the creme de la creme part that everybody's looking for, the hardware and software equipment. Um, so the latest revision assesses knowledge on platform independent concepts that uh, that are applicable across the portfor portfolio of routers and switches. They are based on the functionalities available in Cisco IOS software release 15 within a 100% virtual environment. So I'm, I want to know if they're going to release some sort of software availability for this, whether it's going to be some version of ver uh, iOS 15 that they're going to allow you to do this. Now, here's a couple things about this. And this is where it's still up in the air. I haven't gotten uh, feedback from my instructors. I haven't gotten feedback from Cisco. Uh, there's actually still a lot in the air about this. But they do, what they have basically said is they are going to update the 360 learning program with free assessment labs, practice lab workbooks, and things like that, and CIR, um, the Route Switch 1 and 2 instructor led training. Great. Thanks, Cisco. Um, but what I want to know is if you don't have access to Cisco IOS version 15.3, what do you do? I don't have access to that. I actually have access to iOS 15 per, and it says universal software release, not advanced enterprises. Notice how advanced enterprise services is gone now. Um, they have universal for both IT services software release for the switches. I can put 3750 or uh, that level of um, iOS on my 3750, but I don't have a service contract to do that. So I want to know how Cisco is actually going to come out with this and do this. So I do have the 7200 series switch uh, routers in GNS3 that I can run a few routers just to get an idea of what's going on. And I'm sure that um, now one thing that I would recommend you do is go to the feature navigator. And what this basically does is if you go to cisco.com forward slash go forward slash fn, you can type in this iOS image. So 15.3t, um, uh, universal software or universal release, whatever the heck they want to call it. And you can compare it to whatever iOS image you have. So right now in my production home environment, which if you guys give me just one second, this is my home rack. This is what I use from all of my studies. This is, uh, it's cabled up just like this. Um, well, mine is this top switch. Um, I was using that for my production for a little while. Um, this is going off to my Wi-Fi here at home. But um, what I basically have is I've got, uh, I've got 63725s running 12415T, Advanced Enterprise Services. So what I would be able to do is figure out what iOS image I'm running, which I, I know what image I'm running, and what images I'm running on my switches and my switch, which is, and then take those guys and compare them to iOS 15.3. See what it is that I need to do. And I'm also going to compare that to the iOS image that I have available in GNS3. So I'm going to do that. Now the drawback to that is the 7200 series router is um, it's a multi-axis device. So what that basically means is it's got a lot of different line cards. Everything's 100% mod uh, modular. It does not come with any fixed ports. So there's no fast Ethernet ports. There's no AUI ports. There, it's all modular. So you actually have to have like a line card plugged into it in order for it to work. So um, when it comes to that, that will work. Now it says any other hardware platform that can run equivalent Cisco iOS software version 15 may be used as well. So I'm going to take that as they say it. However, having worked in the real world, I know things that they put in a document doesn't always mean that. So um, that's basically what it covers. So um, the next section here is going to be um, uh, along with the changes to the version 5 blueprint new material for the Cisco 360 learning program beginning January 2014. So. It should be interesting to see exactly how all this comes out to play when it comes to training and updates and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to it. However, some people may not. Now I'm going to show you the exam topic for the blueprint uh, for the lab exam. 
and just give you an overview of what that looks like. So it's an eight-hour hands-on exam, which requires you to configure and troubleshoot a series of complex networks to give to given specifications. Um, so you are expected to um, be really good with networking, like really, really good. So uh, just as an idea, if you've never heard of the CCIE or you're interested in knowing more about it, it's typically require they typically recommend I should say um, seven to ten years of experience working in an enterprise level environment and having a CCNA and CCMP level of understanding I am studying for my CCMP currently and I have the um, uh, twitch exam in a couple of days and I have troubleshoot a few weeks after that so I'm studying really, really hard for that, so I decided to take a few minutes break and work on this for a few minutes just to get this covered and talked about and go from there. So, um, so we have pretty much all the Layer 2 stuff that you're going to need to worry about. And then we have, uh, there's actually quite a bit in Layer 2. Five sections, four sections. Layer 3 technologies, we have 2.0 through 2.5. There's a lot. 2x7, 2x8, 2x8. So there's eight sections with multiple subtopics below them. So um, I'm just curious to see how training vendors are going to handle this. So they have VPN technologies. Then we have like the MPLS side of the house up here. Then we have um, uh, we have GRE, which is just normal tunneling. Dynamic GRE, then we have DMVPN, Next Top Redundancy Protocols, or Next Top Resolution Protocol. Um, we have DMVPN with IPsec use in Free Share Key, QoS Profile, Pre Classify. I'm not sure what these guys are, but I've dealt with this before. Um, we have IPsec tunnels. So we have the tunneling, and then we have the encryption. So, uh, and then we have uh, IPv6 and IPv4 tunnels. And v uh, virtual tunneling interfaces, things like that. Then we have troubleshooting VPN technologies. Um, this stuff is going to be just a step up in scale and size and difficulty from the CCMP. So uh, implementing c uh, security, so AAA v using the local database, so you can't lock yourself out of the device. You can, but you're not supposed to be able to do that. So it would be, I've done this several times, where all you're doing is... Um, uh, you can turn on AAA, you turn it on, you use new model, which applies to all ports that you could potentially connect to the device with. And then you authenticate using a default method list using the local database. Local, are you the local database or the local case sensitive database? The difference between the two is case sensitive. Whenever I log into a device, I use a capital R, my name Rob, and that's how I, uh, that's how I connect to it. That says device access control. You can actually limit what it is a user can do using the uh, exec commands. So you can go into global config, type in whatever user can use, and he can only do ping, trace route, and telnet to see if a port's available or a device is up and running. And then they have uh, lines, uh, VTY, auxiliary for your modem and then console, SNMP, management plane protection, which is going to be your like your control plane policing, things like that, and password encryption, type 7 versus MD5. Implement troubleshooting control plane policing. Um, so are you matching Telnet or are you denying Telnet? Things like that. Um, and then uh, VLAN access list, port access list, zone control, GCP snooping. This stuff should be um, pretty straightforward if you have a CCNA security level of understanding of how most of this stuff works. Um, this should be stuff that you deal with on a regular basis. You can do time-based access control. So you do a time-based and then, or put a time frame in there. Um, uh, U, uh, URPF. Um, did the traffic leave? Uh, is it come? I forget what it does. Yeah. Um, the place that it came out is that the same place it would go back out. So if it came in on an interface, is that the same interface it would leave on? Um, RA guard. I'm not exactly sure. Router advertisement guard. Um, so we have all the uh, IPv6 first top security. So things like that. And then we have uh, troubleshooting secure infrastructure security. So um, that's pretty much all the stuff that we have in here. There is a Wireshark trace analyzer, but I've never 
that must be in the upper la uh, upper levels of iOS. And then we have obviously doing different device management, uh, Telnet, and then secure copy SSH, TFTP, um, and so on and so forth. And then we have um, QoS. That's not going to be a big topics uh, section because of QoS in the, in the network. And then we have network services. Um, so network services itself is going to be a pretty big s uh, section too with first hop redundancy protocols. Um, uh, redundancy using IPv6 router solicitation router advertisement. Uh, NTP, DHCP, um, stateless, uh, stateless auto addressing configuration, and then DHCP v6, um, static NAT, dynamic NAT, policy based NAT, um, things like that, NAT, AI, whatever that is. Uh, then we have uh, an optimization with voice, and then we have uh, object tracking with IPSLA, enhanced object tracking. Uh, NetFlow, that's going to be a big thing, especially if you want to be checking. Um, the uh, traffic through the device and um, and then EEM policy using applet um, that's going to be something that's going to be more scripting based and then we have some other features in here uh, for troubleshooting issues in the network so that is the that's the overview and things like that so uh, I'm looking forward to it um, going from there so I hope this has been informative for you I'd like to thank you for viewing